Hello, everyone. Hi. We're nearing the end of Ray Franz's chapter, Shepherds of the Flock and in Search of Christian Freedom. We're on page 343. The new subhead is More Erroneous Distinctions. Ray starts, Since the Watchtower organization especially rules out any conversation of a spiritual nature with disfellowship persons, it faces a problem when dealing with Paul's exhortation in 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 14 and 15. In the New World Translation, his words read, quote, But if anyone is not obedient to our word through this letter, keep this one marked. Stop associating with him, that he may become ashamed. And yet, do not be considering him as an enemy, but continue admonishing him as a brother. Since following this counsel would not support or suit their policy of complete shunning, the Watchtower classes this as treating of a less serious co case than involved in disfellowshipment, and they thus set up a separate category called marking, which allows for less drastic measures and attitude towards those marked. They would thereby make it appear that the treatment here discussed is different from that at 1 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. But is it? Now, um, he doesn't quote it, so I, I think we'll, we'll read it to you so you can understand his point. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. In my letter, I wrote you to quit mixing in company with fornicators, not meaning entirely with the fornicators of this world or the greedy persons and extortioners or idolaters, otherwise you would actually have to get out of the world. But now I am writing you to quit mixing in company with anyone called a brother that is a fornicator or a greedy person or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner not even eating with such a man. So his question again is, is this different, this tra treatment, is it different than the treatment in 2 Thessalonians mm -hmm. 3? Mm -hmm. So his analysis continues, the context shows that the offense is disobedience to the written word of an apostle sent by Christ. Certainly this is no minor matter. The Watchtower organization surely would not view it in that light if it were a matter of witnesses disregarding its own declaration of policies or teaching. In its discussion of the text, the watchtower, uh, the text being the, the, the Thessalonians one about marking, in the watchtower of April 15, 1985, page 31, quotes Paul's words, stop associating with him, and then says, quote, brothers, would not completely shun him, for Paul advised them to continue admonishing him as a brother. Yet by their limiting, note not terminating, social fellowship with him, they might lead him to become ashamed. What the Watchtower fails to recognize, or to acknowledge, is that the Greek phrase Paul used, and I won't even try, <laughs> <It's a football laughs> this word is about 20 letters long, for, quote, stop associating with, the same identical phrase is used in 1 Corinthians 5.11, where the New World Translation renders it, quit mixing in company with. This can be seen in the interlinear reading of the Kingdom Interlinear Translation, and then he has a photostat of the mm -hmm. interlinear, where it's very plain. If you look in the left, under the Greek, it's mix, to be mixing serves up with, I'm sorry, to be mixing selves up with, and then in the Thessalonian text, it is not to mix up selves with. It's the same Greek term. Mm -hmm. There is no difference in the force of the term in both texts. In both cases, Christians are urged to avoid intimate fellowship on a personal level with persons con committing the wrongs described, either in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 or in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 doing this so that the wrongdoer may become ashamed. This is the extent of the counsel, nothing more. Then he has a, a footnote to this. Reads, 
it may be noted that even when the apostle speaks of the man who is disputatious to the point of being divisive and who has received repeated admonitions about this, his counsel does not absolutely prohibit any speaking with him. At Titus 3 verse 10, the Greek word sometimes rendered reject actually has the meaning of begging off from or excusing oneself. The New English Bible renders it by, quote, have done with him. So even in this case, there is still allowance for common courtesy in dealing with such ones, politely but firmly excusing oneself from being drawn into useless debates with them. So Titus 3 verse 10 is well worth reading because this is the text that's often used for complete rejection. Mm -hmm. As for a man that promotes a sect, reject him after a first and a second admonition. Even he gets a chant. Yeah. Now does reject mean completely shun, i.e. don't speak to at all? Because here you can see Paul's Jewishness coming out. There's mm -hmm. many proverbs in the wisdom literature, in the book of Proverbs, along this line of don't, don't meddle with a fool because you'll become foolish like him. Mm -hmm. This kind of mm -hmm. counsel over and over again in the Proverbs about how to treat those who, who, who are always for a fight. Yeah. But this is not the same as completely shunning. Those people who were for a fight that were just stubborn mules in Hebrew society, they weren't stoned to death <laughs> for their sin, nor were they expelled from Jewish community or prevented from coming to the normal stuff of life. But yeah. they weren't people you'd hang out with. Yeah, so this so is totally consistent with that yeah. trend of, of, of philosophy. Have done with. Yeah, it does give you that impression. Plus, you don't have to disfellowship this man if he's promoting a sect. He's, t he's leading people away from yeah. the group. The very meaning of sectarianism, as mm -hmm. Paul puts it in Acts 20 when he's warning about the, the wolves to come, mm. they will lead off followers after themselves. Don't have to worry about them. <laughs> doing much damage because they don't want to hang out with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the next segment, Ray brings to our attention that many of these insights that we, that he shared with us in this chapter on Shepherds of the Flock were brought to the attention of the governing body back in the 1970s by leaders of the Bethel headquarters, mm -hmm. one of whom was Ray himself. But Carl Adams and Ed Dunlap and himself brought some of these considerations to the attention of the governing body, and it's uh, pretty predictable what the reaction was. That's in the next segment. Mm -hmm. But we will link a series we have done on the problem with this form of Bible interpretation where you must make the text conform to your policy. It's a series called Humpty Dumpty Hermeneutics. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that on your screen. And if you like, uh, it has many applications, not just to the Watchtower, because many Christians, too, mm -hmm. are guilty yes. of this very trend. Yeah. How to study the Bible. How to, how to read and understand the Bible. Properly. Mm -hmm. Next time, we're going to the last segment of this chapter, Shepherds of the Flock.